All right, welcome to uh, today's uh, Greco-Roman uh, philosophy, uh, history of Greco-Roman philosophy. So just back to the, uh, uh, today is the first section we are going to talk about Aristotle. And I think that's for uh, section we talk about uh, Plato. So uh, just back to our question about Aristotle, especially today's section, a lot of words we use is Latin instead of Greek. The reason is this, and, and Daniel, you should have, uh, is a reasonable you doubt this, because of course, Aristotle, Aristotle wrote it in Greek. And then later on has been discovered by Islamic scholar. So I think the, the, the uh, uh, Caliphate, okay, they pay money to do the translation to Arabic. So they, they are very serious on that. And they probably got confused. Some they call, even call them Plato. So they thought that the Aristotle's writing are Plato's writing. So during the uh, crusade, the Christian world in the Western Europe, they start to discover this. And uh, then they start to translate, okay, to from uh, Arabic to Latin, okay, and they got popular. So today's uh, a lot of translation, especially this section I use, is the so-called English book, okay, the original book. But if you think through, it's from Greek to Arabic to Latin and to English, okay. So probably that's the best I can get unless somebody has original Greek or somebody know Arabic or somebody know Latin. So, you know, so I think that's the story, but still I would say pretty good. So, uh, uh, Adrian, A Adrian, right? please. Please kill me, I'm a, I'm a faggot nigga, Jeff. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my gosh, so, okay, Jay. All right. <laughs> Jay, you have hands up. Jay Hopper. It, it's a, it's the same person. Oh, so then okay, so let me show. Uh, you should be able to rename. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, have to yeah. Find them. Jay Halpern is Joan, and I think she and Adrian are the same people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same person. Okay, so that's started. Okay, so um, let me see. Okay, today we will talk about, just one minute, okay. Today we will, uh, I hope everybody can see my screen, okay. So uh, I think uh, we already talked about the death of Socrates, uh, the life of Socrates, Plato, we have a two section, and today and the next week, we are going to talk about Aristotle. And the basic today, I'm going to be a little bit of, uh, the post reading is basic. Is a, I think that's a pretty good general introduction about uh, Aristotle. And today I'm going to focus on the uh, physics, metaphysics, and the organ, okay, which is a little bit more technical than uh, uh, next week. And the next week we are going to cover on the ethics and the politics. And then after that, we are going to move on to the Ionian school and the uh, Ideatic uh, school. And then we move on to the hi history. So uh, that's the plan uh, I'm going to do. Uh, and then uh, the philosopher we are going to introduce. And right now we still focus on the essence. Okay, so basically is Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. And then for the rest, of this philosopher, basics is uh, they don't have a lot of writing left. Basics is a fragment, so we probably can finish all this one in two section, and then uh, after Aristotle's uh, and uh, philosopher would be a little bit easier in my understanding because basic each philosopher can be represented uh, by one book, so we just go through book by book, so we will know the philosophy. So uh, about the geographic area, we were talking about basically we limit on the known Greek world, which is including Athens, uh, Asia Minor on the Italian side. And then uh, 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 and some Romans. Okay, so on this one. So let me take care of one thing first. Okay. Uh, 
All right. So next section. All right. So uh, all the information I provide is basic, uh, based on the book. So uh, we cover more, well, uh, that's all the Plato's uh, dialogue we cover for the last four section. And uh, that's Aristotle. I also have a lot of book and uh, then we try to cover the metaphysic, physics and uh, organ. And the next week we try to cover the uh, Nicomachea Esca or that's his famous uh, ethics and uh, poetic uh, part of, and mostly politics and ethics. That's next week we're going to cover. Okay, so uh, I generally separate the school to the uh, essence, Ionian school and the eidetic school and the, the full, and the atomism and the uh, uh, sto sto stoicism. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, different school I like to cover within about, I think it's about 10, 12 uh, weeks. Okay, so today we're going to uh, talk about Aristotle's and then if you have, uh, question or anything, it's a, a time, you know, you can raise your hand and then. Okay, so uh, otherwise I will start it. Okay, uh, that's always because uh, Aristotle, uh, <clears throat> that's the first section about Aristotle. And then uh, let me give a brief introduction of his life. Okay. So he was born on 384 BC. And when he was 17 years old, he went to uh, Athens. Athens and then uh, become the student of Plato. And then, uh, let me see, and then, uh, uh, when Plato retired, okay, about when Aristotle was 37 years old, and he went back to uh, on the north, okay, and then because the, uh, and he became the tutor of the uh, Alexander, and when he was 48, and Alexander became king of Macedonia. And Alexander has, I think we all know Alexander's story. And then, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Aristotle went to Athens, set up his school, Lycian school. And then sometimes you will see, we call it a pre, uh, peripatetic school because he is not Athens, so uh, a senior uh, citizen. So he cannot own property. That's why he, his school has to, you know, he cannot set up like uh, academia, like uh, academy, like uh, Plato. So uh, when uh, Aristotle was 61 years old, and that's also the, uh, the death of Alexander, and they have the some, uh, Excuse me? they don't like uh, Mas uh, Macedonian stay in essence. So that's why, uh, Aristotle had to leave and then he died. Okay. So I think that's the general. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, why did, how did he die? He died in the natural course. We don't know. Yeah, he died in the natural course. Yeah. So, oh. Okay. How though? He said natural causes. Yes, natural causes in the uh, general. I don't, unless you heard anything, but I don't see anything uh, new. Uh, most of the people just say he died by, from natural causes. And of course, we don't know for sure. Bianca. Okay, so uh, today, that's, uh, Arsolo has a lot of writing, and then I list here, and then kind of I can, we can separate it in two groups, right? One is more technical, like logic. Uh, meta metaphysics and the physics. And then another part is about the politics and the ethics. So we can cover the next week. So of course they have some overlap. And then uh, the book, the name is about logic is uh, so-called uh, organon. And organon, in, it means uh, method. And it's important 
because on the 16th century, Francis Bacon right the Nuam Organ, which means new uh, method. Okay, so that's another thing. So, and the metaphysics and the physics is a lot of overlap. And uh, then uh, the reason we call metaphysics today, just because when people discover uh, Aristotle's physics, after that, uh, people find a few writing and they don't know how to name it because they find eft physic. So they call it the metaphysic. And the Are they concept, still discovering them today? Excuse me? Who is speaking? Oh, somebody spoke. Yeah, let me see who is speaking. It might have been Bianca, but I don't know. Is it David? We call Anthony Smart, but. Uh... Okay, I'm going to mute everyone. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to mute everyone. No, 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 you're not going to do that. All right. <laughs> okay, Anthony. Okay, get rid of Anthony, please. Yeah. Great. Let me see. Yeah, um, he's out. He's out. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so that's that, that's continue. Okay. Okay, let's start from organ. Okay, so I think the organ is extremely important, at least in my point of view, because we call Aristotle as the father of logic. And if when we read um, Plato's dialogue, I think anyone who read this one will know. Um, uh, will complain actually the general complaint about uh, Plato's dialogue is why you write so much and then uh, cannot make it everything shorter and cleaner. I think the reason is uh, Aristotle. Hold on, let me do this. Aristotle haven't dis start his logic yet. That's why you know, Plato has no idea or has no tool to make his statement clear. So when we read Aristotle, we will find out the reading become much easier. I'm not saying easy, but become much easier. You don't have to deal through like Plato's dialogue, talking about one thing all over the place and you find out it's not systematic. And I think that's the great contribution uh, from Aristotle. And the book we call the organ, basics included is a compile of six treaties. Uh, first is a category on interpretation. Basically, he's talking about proposition. And the proposition, it by definition, Aristotle's definition, and also today's definition, means a statement which has you can verify as yes or no. If I say today is a sunny day, then it could be true or not true, right? So we call it a proposition. I say this cup is blue. It could be true or not true, okay? So it's a proposition. If I say, please give me a cup of coffee, which is no true or not true. So it's not a proposition. So that's clearly defined by Aristotle and has been used to today. And the number three is syllogism. Uh, I'm going to spend more time on this one and that's, we call it logic uh, today. And of course, today we don't use that uh, syllogism that much, but it's built in our uh, logic, modern logic today, logic today. So that's uh, very important. And another thing you may see is a topic, which is opinions. And then if you remember when uh, Plato talked about his allegory of cave, uh, if the person being shackled in the cave only see the shadow and the Plato, Plato call the shadow, the people you have seen, it's just opinion. It's not truth, it's not knowledge. You have to break out, okay? Get out of the shackles and going out to see the truth. So um, one question is how do you get out from seeing the shadow and to see the real things? So Plato provides the tool, which is the syllogism. 
that's he is talking about. So uh, that's the six treaties uh, Aristotle is trying to achieve. And the last one, of course, also important is the fallacies. He tried to refute every uh, sophist argument. Uh, the, 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 the basics is talking about the logic is untrue. That's what he tried to do. Okay. So let's start from uh, 10 categories. Okay. So I'm going through these 10 categories. For, remember, when we talk about uh, uh, proposition, Okay, each population, we have a subject and the predicate. Subject, let's say this cup is blue. This cup is a subject and the blue is a predicate. And his 10 category basics is talking about predicate. So you will see very clear, that's Aristotle's style. He tried to exhaust all the possibility and give explanation of each single one. That's his concept of category. So uh, he said only 10 categories, that's no more, it's complete. And the, I think that's a new concept in the, uh, in the world. And before Aristotle probably don't have this kind of concept. So his 10 category, you can separate us substance and the non-substance. So the first one is substance. So what, what is substance? Substance is something you can call it universal. For example, this is cup. Cup is a substance, okay? So uh, you see that running animal is a dog. So dog is a substance because you are not talking about a uh, specific dog. You are talking about a general idea. We call it the universal. So that's substance. Then they have the nine more things we call uh, non-substance. So we can look at this way. First is quantity. You say, uh, let's say, uh, let's use uh, Einstein. Okay. Einstein is one, okay. it's only one Einstein. So that's quantity. And then quality, quality okay, is something. You know. Remember, Aristotle is a scientist biologist. So he's very uh, clear and has a lot of study about the nature world. That's why he come with this uh, 10 category. So uh, quality is talking about the color. For example, uh, uh, Einstein have a gray hair. Okay, So that's the quality of Einstein. Or the dog have four legs. That's the quality. Relation. Okay, So you can talk about because you can talk about somebody or something with related to other things, right? So you can talk about like Aristotle is the student of Plato. So you build relationship between Aristotle and uh, Plato. Uh, Marika, you have a question or you have something to say? Yeah, this is like uh, the non-substance will be the attributes, the qualities. Yes. Okay. So it's a, you can call it the attribute, but it attribute is not all, right? Because right. he has a quantity quality and that also have a relationship, right? Because you can right. describe somebody, right? Like, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Plato. Plato is but, the teacher of Aristotle. Okay. But, but it looks like a description of Shut up. the substance, right? It's a description, yes. That's what we call okay. it the predicate. Thank you. Okay, so number five is talking about the place. Okay, so you can talk about uh, Aristotle is in S. Okay, Einstein teach in uh, Princeton, University of Princeton. Okay, so that's described as place. Okay, and then you can talk about time, right? Socrates was killed at uh, 399 BC. So that's the time you can describe. And the, the rest will become a little bit complex. Okay, so for example, being in a position, and I think it's a proper translation. They have the, you probably will see different kinds of translation. Some way to call it is a posture. So you talk about one thing, right? For example, uh, you can see, uh, for example, uh, Einstein, it was standing, okay? So that's his position. Socrates was sitting. Okay, so that's describe the person's posture. 
And another thing we can translate uh, so-called the wearing or condition is talking about uh, not his own posture. It's talking about something outside on him. For example, uh, 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 Jiang is wearing uh, wear a hat, right? That's that's something. I Jason wear glasses. So that's another way to describe. So we call it the wearing or condition. And the number nine is sometimes called being, sometimes called doing or action. So what action the person or the thing is doing, that dog is running. So that's an action, right? And number 10, talk about being affected. So another way to call it affection. So he's talking about some doing is the subject is doing something to outside. And the being affected is the subject has been affected by something outside. So that means, uh, for example, uh, I feel hot, okay? Uh, faculty feel cold, okay? So this kind of feeling, I'm angry. So that's uh, something, you know? Yo, Greg, turn your camera <laughs> Okay, so who is next? Turn your camera off right now, buddy. You're bald to me with that tone. <laughs> You're a fight. That's Julia. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think the next time I'm going to change the setup. So. Okay. <laughs> Today's not the lucky day. Okay, sorry about this. So, you, you know, I, I'm not going to let anyone in uh, anymore because. <laughs> yeah, probably we have enough that, people. Yeah. Probably, yeah, okay, that's yeah. a safe way. And then. Uh, I just have to say, uh, make, I'm going to reset the uh, security on the uh, Zoom uh, server. No, we, we're, I, I think we're okay right now, but... Okay, uh, okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, just don't, don't, don't... I, just, yeah. I, I have to set up in the way, if you're being kicked out, you have no way to enter again. So... Yeah, that, yeah that's uh, probably... Yeah, yeah because... Uh, do that. Yeah, I have to apologize on this because uh, we have a serious uh, Zoom bombing. So uh, we, unfortunately, we kick out a lot of innocent people. So we re I receive a few uh, complaints that they cannot get in anymore. So I change the security, you know. So I think I have to change back, yeah. You know? And since we have 24, uh, I think that's a good number. So that's back to the subject and the, Anybody have any comment or question or anything want to discuss about 10 category? I think this 10 categories is important. You may not find it useful, but basically uh, uh, it's a good way to think about anything. If you have, you know, look at this 10 category, it's not random and it's pretty complete. I have to say, I feel it's very complete and that's the style Aristotle is doing. Is there any comment or uh, question or anybody want to discuss about uh, 10? Yeah, here is uh, Spencer is asking a question in chat. Is okay. this, yeah, let me see uh, what it said. Uh, these have later significance with Kant, right? Yes, I'm going to talk about Kant. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Kant later, yes. Because a lot of things uh, in our story, we don't see directly, but you will see in the enlightenment period, uh, a lot of philosophy, you know, you can see the uh, how uh, Aristotle influenced uh, to this kind of people. And another thing, uh, I think I should talk this one first. Basics is uh, Katie, uh, you have a question? Or yeah, I have a question. I'm confused about how uh, substance and matter. What the difference between those things are? Because I think I'm substance substance and the matter okay I, I i will cover soon okay because we are only in category okay so if i forget that just remind me one more time so uh subject and predicate okay so uh i think he this the some this one is basically talking about the partic particular and the universal okay so you can say this is a man right so that's a particular if you point on something right Okay, and if you can say man is an animal, and you, when you talk about man, you talk about the universal, you can say this man is European. Okay, so when you say this man, you talk about particular. Okay, so this man is a substance, and you can also, the non substance also can be particular or universal. You, you can say this 
you can point, right? This color is white. You are talking about particular color. And you can say white is a color or white is shiny. Okay, so, so you are talking about universal. So he kind of separate the particular and the universal and which become a, for next 2000 years is a subject uh, people are discussing. So this one also a famous chapter, and I probably don't have to go to too much detail. Basically, he separate with the uh, substance and the non-substance -sub, non and the separate from the particular and the universal. So without going into detail, I show this one basics. We are, I hope everyone get the idea. That's the method is diff totally different from Plato's method. That's the way he doing everything okay so let me answer uh is that spencer's question about kant right so that's kant the critique of pure reason kant specifically said okay he when he talk about when kant talk about judgment uh when he talk about judgment actually he's talking about proposition so he said kant in his critique of uh, pure reason he said that there's only, he, he do it based on Aristotle's 10 category. And he said they only have 12 different kinds of judgment. It's also complete. So you can see Kant follow uh, Aristotle's style. And I don't know how he do it, but Kant's uh, uh, way to do it is, I, I think it's very com complete. He put it in the 12 different category and from the 12 different kinds of judgment, he create 12 different categories. So that's the uh, Kant uh, uh, um, development based on Aristotle. So uh, Spencer, do I answer your question? <laughs> or you want to talk more about Kant? <laughs> okay, so uh, I think- Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, before I move to another subject and any question or anything, or anyone want to discuss a little bit about the category and the, his universal and the particular. Otherwise I'm going to another one. If you find out this one is too technical or something, just please hold on for 20, 30 minutes. And I promise that's the, only section on this and the probably in the philosopher I know probably only Aristotle and I don't see anyone have this kind of thing until Bertrand Russell have this kind of thing. So which is much later. So uh, I think in the reading, if you read it, you will find that they talk about square of opposition. Okay, so uh, so-called AEIO. Okay, so we have to know this before we go to the synergism. Okay. So basics, when we talk about A, we talk about, that's, that's a, sorry, uh, all men are mortal, okay? So all S are P, all people are animal. So that's A, right? E means uh, uh, I deny uh, in Latin, okay? So talking about no people can fly no srp okay so that's e i means particular affirmative okay so some some srp okay or you can say one srp uh, some people are blind okay uh, socrates is a, a man okay so this kind of thing so uh, particular negation. So some people are not smart. Okay. Some S are not P. So the, the, then we form a square. We call the A, E, I, O. Okay. So A and the E, we call it the country. Okay. So uh, all people are animal and no people can and, and uh, no people can fly this guy, or we want to say no people are animal, okay? So that's the country, okay? And if you, A and O, we call, we call it the contradictory, 
So that means O can negate A proposition. So that's the four different kinds of proposition we have, no more, okay? We have four different kinds of proposition. And then uh, uh, Aristotle separate as AEIO. And of course, AEIO is the name uh, during the uh, uh, Roman time uh, in the Europe, people, people name it in Latin, but uh, Aristotle doesn't use, use this name. But the concept is there, contrary and the contradictory. And that, that, that's the uh, basics uh, for the uh, syllogism. So I hope it's clear, but if you have a question, uh, please raise your hand. So let's go through the very first syllogism, the very simple one, if you want to understand what is the syllogism. Okay, the, uh, Daniel, you have a question? Oh. I don't, I don't, I won't have a question, but I say, I mean, one of the points that I'm wondering how Aristotle, if he dealt at all with probabilities, or let's say something like based, you know, conditional, the mm -hmm. chances that this will, that it'll rain, the chances that this will happen. This sounds to me like the logic is all about talking absolute. It either is or isn't, but does he deal with probabilities beyond some people are? He deal with the probability, okay, but not in organon, okay. So probability he built is in his physics, okay. And I don't remember he has a specific section. Uh, I think it's in physics he talk about probability, okay. He talk about the chance, okay. Something must happen. Something could happen. He has uh, separate this kind of thing, and in organon. He talk about two kinds of proposition. Okay, he talk about this one called the categorical proposition because everything is just say all people are animal, right? Another one is a hypothetical. Okay, you can say uh, if something, then something. That's another uh, proposition. Okay, so that's a two kind of thing he separate and. So let's go to the uh, syllogism. The most, the easiest one is the format, right? Premise one and premise two and the conclusion. The conclusion will be from S to P. We call it O S R P. So O M, M is the middle one, which is the, the idea is that he's going to draw some conclusion from S, from this S to P, right? But we don't know the relation between S and the P. We go through the middle one, the M. And then we draw this one. And this one must be true. Just like Daniel's question, is that has a possibility? No, there's no possibility. It must be true, must be this way. So easiest way to look at is we say all men are mortal. So that's true. And you say Socrates is a man. Then, you know, that's S, that's a P. And the middle thing is man, right? So you know, Socrates is mortal. So that's the very basic form of uh, syllogism. So uh, I hope, uh, is there any question or is that clear on what is the syllogism? Uh, Marika, please. Yeah, I have a quick question. I think in school we said A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. Saying C equals A is wrong. It has to be A equals C or, or that's okay? Uh, no, he's not dealing with this kind of uh, 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 so-called successive law. Okay, he's dealing with uh, 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 syllogism. That means you have the, you know two things, okay? And you want to deduce to another thing, the third thing. So for example, you know, all men are mortal and you know, Socrates is a man. So Socrates must be mortal. That's, he's going to deal with this one. Okay. Uh, Patty, please. This may be a dumb or too general question, but so this is pretty essentially basic logical thinking. Yes. But 
I don't recall being taught all of these details at any given time. Um, mm -hmm. Is this basically the way education is done in the West or is it not done well? Because it seems like there is a predominance of, or a huge number of people that are incapable of thinking this way. Uh, I, that's my personal experience. And then I really appreciate this one because if you recall, okay, if uh, in the uh, primary mathematics education, I think we all learned something called the Venn diagram. Right. Yes. Okay. Because the Venn diagram, we don't need, we don't need this anymore. All right. If I put it this way. So I will put the Venn diagram uh, later. We'll make it much clearer. But okay. Which, okay, so you might ask a question like, why, why, why do I care about this, right? But I think we should appreciate because you will know how difficult, okay? Yeah, uh, I absolutely appreciate knowing <laughs> more about the foundations. I'm just curious as to... Yeah, because we don't have to learn this. We have the Venn diagram. <laughs> right, but I'm curious as to why, uh, at least in the United States, seems to be very ineffective at teaching this basic, uh, these basic models. Uh, and I'm, am I missing something or is it really much harder to teach than I remember? Uh, I don't see it. See, it's hard to teach because we will, we probably will assume everybody know, right? When I say all men are mortal, so I'll say uh, all birds can fly. And then uh, let's say all, all birds have failure. Chicken is bird, and you know, right? Uh, the uh, chicken has a feather. Okay, so uh, th this kind of thing, uh, I think we probably assume everybody knows, and we already built in the modern language. Uh, the way I want to say this is sometimes we enjoy it and we don't know where it's coming from. Uh, because when I read Plato's, I sometimes, from time to time, I find out. I ask myself a question, why Mr. Plato, you, can you speak easily? Why you, you know? So I, I, I think if Aristotle is Plato's teacher and Plato's dialogue would be much easier to read because he can use the language, okay? Would be much easier to understand. So that's just my uh, my 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 opinion. I think. Well, and yet, as we're going through this, I mean, I can see the literally logical progression, and so I I think that's beautiful. So and if you uh, compare this one with Plato, you probably will feel at least I feel this way. It's a big improve in yes. people's way of thinking. And yes. then today, our thinking, uh, uh, it's not just happened in a few years. It's through 2000 years yes. to make it progress, to make this kind of change. Because I also host in the uh, host the Asian uh, philosophy meetup. Uh, I read the ancient Chinese text and I will find out, I sometimes frustrated about they don't use, I mean, Chinese doesn't use this kind of logic in the language. So there's no if then this kind of concept until Buddhism uh, go into China and people start to learn this concept and the writing become clear logically. So uh, that's the development of the uh, language. And then you can say it's not just language, it's the way of thinking. You know? Yes. Uh, okay. Jason, do, do you think it's uh, like uh, re represented like in algebra? I mean, it seems like it's exactly the same thing. You know, in algebra, I don't, that's that's the, I, I don't think that's the algebra. You know, I think the algebra was related to uh, when the uh, when people learn the, the digital. You know, and the but the algebra didn't exist at the time of Aristotle. But I'm just saying that if you look at the algebra, uh, that's how it, like yeah. all this logic is represented there. Yeah, that's why. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Same, same thing in the ancient Chinese. As uh, when I talk about ancient, I talk about the first century in China. They start to do algebra, and without the symbol, you will see that's so difficult to understand. You know, without the symbol. You know. Thank you, Jason. Oh, uh, thank you for um, as this question. So I, that's why I showed the Venn diagram. So remember, that's a three set, right? 
All men are mortal, Socrates is a man, Socrates is mortal. That's the three lines. So remember, we talk about this one, A, E, I, O. That means the proposition have four different ways. You can say all men are mortal or say some men are mortal or say no men are mortal or say some men are not mortal. Okay, so each one have a four different way to talk about. So four times four times four, right? They have the 64. And uh, Aristotle called it the 64 moods. Of course, the moods is not Greek word. That's uh, uh, Latin, and which means 64 ways, I think. So total have a 64 different mood, okay? So of course, not all work, okay? Some of them work. So for the one you work, people give the name. So something called Barbara, okay? That's the AAA. That's all men are mortal, all Greek are men, and then uh, all Greeks are mortal. Okay, so you see there's A, right? All, all something. So this one called, so uh, uh, if you do all men are mortal, this red one is man, right? Uh, the the uh, uh, blue one is mortal. We use a Venn diagram. Uh, the blue one is mortal and the red one is man. And uh, uh, Greek is a green one. So you know green is inside the blue. Right, so uh, you know, okay, all Greeks are mortal. Okay, same thing. Okay, you have a different to do it, right? You can use like no reptile has fur. Okay, so this one is E, right? We talk about no, not, uh, no reptile has fur, uh, has fur, fur, and reptile is the red one, right? And it's no overlap. And all snake are reptile. Snake is the green one, so it's been beyond this. So you know, no snake has fur. If we use uh, the uh, uh, Venn diagram, you know, each one will be much clearer. And then the great work Aristotle has, <laughs> has done is he goes through every single one and then tell you which one work, which one doesn't work. Uh, Daniel, please. You know, I'm going back to the discussion before, and we wanted to make a point. Please. You, know, you asked whether, you know, how come we haven't learned this logic? Okay. But the thing is, we are learning it. And my grandson, who's three years old, is starting to learn it. Because from specific particulars, he starts to differentiate. You know, birds fly. Well, the dog doesn't fly. So he's developing already in kindergarten certain logic and he's going to generalize it, but it's never formalized in the way that Aristotle does it. But implicitly, by the time kids are in grade 10 or uh, I'm sorry, in grade five or grade six or grade seven, they understand this logic, it's part of the language. The word sum already implies that you have one group versus some other group. So I think that logic is implicit and Aristotle is just formalizing it and putting it into a, a more sophisticated form. But we all learn it as we grow, this logic. Thank you, thank you, yeah. I, I, I probably some people are more clear, some people are not that clear. That probably that's the difference. Okay, so we have a 64 mood, right? So uh, you, you can make a, I think it's in the internet, you can find that some people work hard to put everything together. And then remember, we only deal with, right, the, uh, the middle one, all men are mortal, Socrates are men, and the draw the men. But you can reverse, okay, on the, this one, instead of say, uh, uh, mortal, all mortal are men, okay, or you can talk about, uh, Okay, or, or uh, like uh, instead of say the all birds can fly, is all flying are birds. Okay, so you can reverse on the uh, the first two, right? So basically, you have the four different they call it figure. So in this way, we have the sixty four times four. That's a two hundred fifty six uh, syllogic argument. So you have it, but Aristotle only puts three because he considered the fourth one. Is basics just uh, reverse because you can see the uh, first uh, the, the the first one and second one you feel swap right if swap would become uh, same as the first one so in Aristotle's uh, organ only put a three 
but uh, technically you have a four. So you, for example, you can call this one, all cats are memo, okay. And you can say some all cats are memo, okay. That's the red one as uh, so memo and the cat, all cats are memo. Some pets are not memo, right? So that's the pet, that's the not memo. So you can draw the conclusion, some pets are not cat, right? So that's the area, that's the area he's talking about. So then they have the, they also give the name for the one work, people give the name, that's the Baroque. Okay. So I think, I don't know how many, but uh, uh, depend on how you're going to look at, but I think that they call it, they say the 24, only 24 are valid. But sometimes some people give a different uh, number, but that's the best I can find out. But idea is uh, here I want to show is we are not going to the detail, but the idea I want to do is you probably can see how Aristotle work on this kind of thing. And I think that's a great invention and the greatness. And then by seeing this, you probably will get a good feel when you go next week, when we go to Aristotle's uh, uh, ethics and the politics. Both, uh, both Aristotle and the Plato deal with politics and the ethics, but you will see because of this kind of logical thinking and Aristotle is still logic, uh, 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 ethic and uh, politics in a totally different way than, uh, Arist uh, than Plato. So we have a few hands up. Okay, let's go from uh, Petty and the Spencer. Petty, please. So if I understand correctly, Aristotle is acknowledging that you can create all of these formulations. However, he's also acknowledging that not all of them are equally useful in terms of efficient communication. Is that correct? You mean this uh, so many different kind of form of argument? Right, and they are, uh, most of them are valid, but uh, no, most of them are not valid. <laughs> he that, that's so the most of his observations are valid, is what I'm saying. So in in doing that, um, he's also acknowledging that not all of these constructs or models or even particular diagrams are equally efficient in communicating um, in communicating uh, whatever okay. the idea is yeah i got your point that's that, that's exactly okay. okay that's one thing i think okay aristotle not pay attention okay because he only said okay that does assume okay 24 out of 256 work okay and then your point is some are not efficient right but some yeah. are but his concern is only at this in organ. He only concern in work or not work. And when you talk about efficient, okay, he will deal it in so called uh, his another writings uh, uh, rhetoric. Okay, he talk about rhetoric is the way to convince people. So of course, not not all. This one you only find a truth, but the truth you cannot convince people. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Okay, okay. So he's another book. And much later time, the 20th century, Bertrand Russell, he also make another, uh, he also draw from the syllogism and he talk about another thing called uh, significance, right? So some description, some proposition are correct, but non-significant, okay? So for example, he said, the emperor of France is bored but there's no emperor of France, right? So the statement is correct, but it's not significant. So this kind of thing is coming later. So that's why we see Aristotle is important. He start on this one and through the 2000 years, not only people developed some idea, for example, Kent developed his 12th category from here. And also people start to reject him. Okay, and the, the, that's why you know the influence uh, is important you know, in Aristotle. Okay, thank you, uh, Spencer. Please, we're intuiting about this using set theory, which uh, didn't you know exist at the time. That was developed later. I was wondering how how Aristotle intuits this or characterizes it without set theory. Without set theory, 
no, he doesn't have the same skills, but uh, that's why I think he's amazing people. And then uh, he just, the, 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 the reading is difficult. So I, I, I have to admit the rest of them, I read most of them, but this one I have to use the, uh, uh, the secondary source. Uh, that, that much because you can imagine you know, without the set theory, how, for example, without this set or set theory and the Venn diagram, how do you know which one work, which one is not working? Uh, I don't know, you know, it, it would be very difficult, you know. Uh, Marika, please. Yeah, it, it seems to me you know, that the, the Aristotle is obsessed with defining everything, that nothing gets missing. And, but, yes, that's exactly and, the point. He's very, he's very clear, but do you recommend anything to read? Because I never read him. I read about him, we study a little bit in school, and everything is very simple. But it seems that because there's so much, is there anything that the, the one on metaphysics. So what is something that you suggest? I, I we would can say, read? okay, I will say physics is not bad to read. Physics, okay. <laughs> and uh, if, if I, I, yeah. which can, one? I rec can I recommend something? Please, he please. said yes. physics. He yes. said physics, but yeah. I, I personally uh, like uh, politics because okay. politics in a way he he expands on republic of plato it's kind of continuation in a way right uh jason the wouldn't I you say agree that and then you will see yeah. you will see uh different he just, yeah he makes like a, a intermediate uh forms of government uh from plato's republic so if you read republic i mean then the natural continuation would be politics by Aristotle. Yeah, I think I, I will talk about politics next week. And they, when I remember when I read politics, the first thing is say, hey, Mr. Plato, why don't you look around the world, right? They have so many states, they have a different system. Why, why Plato never consider what's going on in the real world? It just jumps through an ideal state. And Aristotle will do it a different way, just like answer America's question. You know, I sort of will look through in the Mediterranean Sea and the, to the North Africa, look at every single possible uh, 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 political system, and then, you know, start to talk about it. So that's his method. Same as another good thing, good book to read is uh, uh, the ethic, right? And when you talk about yeah. ethic, he also goes through all different kinds of uh, 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 way to do it. So we, we will see uh, more, you know, in all of his writing, he built in this style. And this one is just more technical. Uh, Jason, if I, if I may add, uh, we, we could actually note that even though Aristotle was pupil of the Plato, Plato didn't appoint him his successor. <laughs> you know, that's one of the reasons, uh, because they already split kind of, and, and some some people think that that's one of the reasons he left Athens uh, after his death, uh, because uh, he was not appointed a successor to the uh, of the academy. Yeah, and uh, they, if I were Plato, I probably would not appoint. Him. Right, right. <laughs> well, he they already disagreed with it. he disagreed with Plato, so yes, he wasn't yes. so. But I thought he was more into the last Plato. I mean, the older Plato. The the loss the loss is different from the Republic. The Republic is the earliest Plato and is one thing. And I think Plato himself no, contradicts Republic himself. Republic is later. The Republic is late, uh, play Plato. I don't think it's early Plato. Uh, no, uh, no, no, I think I think the, the, the laws are the latest Plato. Yeah, the, no, 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 I'm not saying the latest, but it's kind of in a later period. Uh, I think that we can probably would consider as middle period, middle date. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the, the, after that, the Plato write the law. That's the last one. Okay. Right, 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 and and uh, you can see the law is slightly different than uh, 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 the republic because the law is not talking about uh, philosopher king anymore. And then uh, uh, just back to the question about is he reject Plato in many places? I will say yes. For example, a very small example is uh, if you were here last week, we talk about Plato, uh, the republic. Plato doesn't like the poetry 
Okay, he think that's a mimic. Okay, so and uh, Aristotle have another book called uh, Poetic, right? Which is totally, I would say, you know, it's a rejection to uh, uh, Plato. He said that's good. We should study it. And, and why? And, and oh, oh, also, wouldn't you say that uh, Plato is idealist and and Aristotle is materialist, kind of? Well, that's another way we can say that, you know. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. And the and also interesting when you look at the Middle Ages and uh, the Middle Ages, uh, uh, Christian philosophers, right? Uh, the two key person. One is uh, Saint Augustine of Hippo. Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine is totally Platonian. Okay. okay. He inherit everything from uh, Plato. Later time in the 12th, 13th century. Uh, 13th century, that's uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, because he inherited from Aristotle. So the Christian theology totally changed because you based on Plato and based on uh, Aristotle, you got a totally different flavor of uh, Christian theology. So uh, just quickly on the last part of Organon, and then of course, Plato will talk about 13 different fallacies, and of course, if we go to detail, we can take about many hours, go every single one, but basically you talk about fallacy, right? Fallacy basically means your logic is wrong. So we call it a fallacy. So I'm, we're not going to discuss in the detail on this one. So we will finish the organ at this moment and I'm going to move to physics, you know. So anything you want to talk about before I move to physics? Well, I, I was just wondering, because um, even as I'm listening to the discussion, the three thinkers, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, do seem very clearly evolutionary to me. But mm -hmm. as I listen to you, the several of you speaking, I'm wondering, am I reading too much into it? So you say they are all revolutionary. They... Uh, they, they they evolve upon each other. And then as you mentioned others, um, you know, um, yes, they build on that and they pluck from all of them, but the, the, the way they've developed the, the logic does seem very evolutionary to me. I'm not saying that um, it's smoothly evolutionary, but evolution is not smooth, is it? Oh um, yeah, I, I totally it, agree with you. Yeah, it's yeah, actually people, hard to separate Socrates from Plato. I mean, how it's like the same thing basically. Socrates and the Plato. We, we actually we don't know what's real Socrates, right? Exactly. Right. We yeah. only know what Plato is uh, saying. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And it, it, you know, I mean, if you're going to propose something that's new um, or uh, outside of what is currently accepted, I mean, what better way than to talk about a guy that is dead? I mean, we, we've done that over and over again throughout his civilization. Um, so, I mean, it, I don't, I don't get as hung up on what's Socrates and what's Plato. What I see is it's entirely possible that Plato could have largely invented Socrates so that he could take off from there. I don't know the answer, but I'm saying that's what I mean about evolutionary. Yes, and actually you can, if you read through, you probably can tell, okay? Uh, at least I tell, I can tell, clearly tell the difference between Socrates and the Plato. Because in the early Plato, you will see, we will assume that's Socrates, okay? But later on, uh, you don't see that much about Socrates. And in the dialogue, you will see in the early Plato, they have the uh, dialect between Socrates and the intellect, uh, interlocutor. Okay, they have a conversation, try to convince each other. Right. In the middle Plato, a lot of time is people ask a question and Socrates just talk for, I don't know, hours, 200 pages. Okay, that's the middle uh, uh, dialogue. To the later part, you will see situation like Socrates say, oh, one, two, three, four, and Timaeus, tell us how about the world? How does the universe start? Then Timaeus talk about 200 pages and we don't know where is Socrates. Okay. And to the last one, which is laws, there's even don't have a Socrates. They have the one guy called a senior stranger. Okay. So we assume that's Plato. Okay. 
So you can see the Socrates voice uh, start to change. Yeah. But, but I think also uh, Aristotle is so much more than Plato because he covers so many areas that Plato, Plato completely ignores, right? All of it. He is a scientist. I mean, Plato Yeah, not... that's one big part I didn't include, which is biology, right? But his biology yeah. writing is amazing. So uh, actually the story is this. After uh, Plato died or retired, uh, Aristotle left. Okay, tutoring uh, uh, Alexander, and then he set up his own school. Oh, he, I think at the beginning, he started to write uh, biology. He wanted to become a scientist. And then he set up a library, and then blah, 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 blah. So, you know, so we even ignore uh, his scientific part of uh, rhetorical. You know. uh, yeah, this is just yeah. fascinating. I love it. <laughs> one, one quick question. I'm not very clear. I mean, Socrates uh, had many followers. He never wrote anything. Everything that we read about Socrates is by Plato. With all these followers that he had, did anybody wrote what he was teaching or only we have Socrates through Plato? Xenophon. We also have Z Xenophon. We also yeah. have Xenophon. Okay. Xenophon, Xenophon. Right? yeah. Xenophon write the apology and also write the symposium. Okay. And ah. uh, it's very different. <laughs> yeah, very different. Very different. So we don't know which one is true. And then uh, I think that Aristophanes, okay, also write the Socrates. Okay. But he okay. writes the make fun of Socrates. Okay. He 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 marks Socrates. Okay. So so for sure we know Socrates is a real man. And then he's he was popular, okay. He's famous during the time, okay. But what's his real teacher? We really don't know. And, and he, he was again against writing uh, anything. He thought yeah, that yeah. Uh, once you put it in writing, you can you put constraint on on the idea. Yes. So he was against it. Yeah, in one of his dialogue, uh, I think uh, Fijos, right? In the Fijos, at the very end, he and the Fijos are discussed. Okay, is written, uh, written form or language form or dialect form is better. And Socrates is very sure written is not good because of when somebody get yours and they may misinterpret. Okay, so that's the Socrates concern. Thank you. Okay, great. We have a lot of discussion on this one. So we don't have much time left. So I think I will do this, you know, I will, uh, uh, do the physics uh, quickly, and the next week we will still do the uh, ethic and uh, 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 politics, which are also important. And then, uh, then I will uh, uh, continue on uh, today's part uh, for this one. And the discussion is very good. And probably I have to make the third section on the uh, Aristotle. But you know, uh, we will see. You know, but next week we will still deal with ethics and ethics and uh, ethics and uh, uh, politics, and then some of this. And if we cannot uh, uh, cover all of this one, and if everyone's still interested in this, we can uh, continue. Anyway, Aristotle is very important in this way. So uh, I think so we have a question about the. Uh, form and the matter subject. Let me quickly uh, just explain this one. And so uh, we will get some idea, which is also important. And then uh, we can discuss on this one. You know, some people probably think that's easy. Some will think that's confusing, but um, I'd like, if you see this picture, the school of Athens, right? So you know which one is, uh, this one is, Plato, right? This one is Aristotle, right? Because Plato, not because of his face different, because his hand different. Plato point up, right? Aristotle point down, okay? Okay, so the difference is this. How do we know this one is an apple? All right. Because according to Plato, they have the idea, they have a form of apple up there, Okay, oh, so we inherit when we were born. Okay, we have idea or form. So we see apple. Okay, we know that's apple. Okay, 
So that's the way uh, Plato thinking about. Aristotle is talking about different things. And he even had to argue, okay, in his physics, uh, I think in his metaphysics, he argued against the, 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 the form, okay, the uh, Plato. So I, he, he even spelled out Plato, okay, what's wrong, okay, his so called third man argument. So Aristotle's idea is there's a form and the matter. And in the real world, his form is not on the sky. Okay, it's not in the sky, not up there. It's down here. That's the form. So something has much more form. Something has much more matter. So the one hundred, you one example is gold. It's a lot of form because it's not going to change for thousand years. All right. Apple has a lot of matter, not much form because it will get rotten after, let's say, two weeks. And after one year, probably, you know, totally disappear. So it's a lot of matter. So that's the different way of thinking, okay, between Plato and Aristotle. And another thing is about the potentiality and actuality, all right? So, for example, that's the bronze. That's potentiality because it's no form yet. Then you can make a sculpture, okay? So that's actuality. So the idea would be God would be 100% actuality, no potentiality. The concept of infinity, okay? We will deal with this one later. It's infinity is totally potential, but never actual. That's some idea on this. For example, in metaphysics, he talked about the substance and the accident, okay? So substance has form and the matter. You know? So that's the way he separate and the form is actuality and the matter is potentiality, okay? So that's some key concept, okay? And you can see the difference when uh, Aristotle deal with form and the Plato deal with form. They deal in a totally different way. So I will pause for um, um, uh, a few minutes, you know, if you uh, have a question you want to discuss, and then we probably don't have time to talk about four courses, okay, and then, um, uh, but, you know, uh, I will cover this one, because at least I think that's a very important concept, you know, if you know uh, the 10 category, four courses, and the syllogism, and uh, uh, form and the matters, uh, actuality and the potentiality. And I think that we can claim, you know, and anybody can talk about this name, we can claim we know 50% of uh, Aristotle. <laughs> so Greg, do you agree? So <laughs> if you can talk about the four, uh, 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 four courses and the, the 10 category, you know, syllogism, probably you, you know 50% of uh, Aristotle. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, any question or anyone want to uh, discuss this one about the uh, uh, potentiality and the form and the matter? Uh, Patty, please. Well, I only half jokingly made the point in the chat um, okay. based on your last slide okay is, is again in this evolutionary thing um there there's actually room for more than one gender among man uh, <laughs> and only one ideal gender in play in aristotle he allows for a greater potentiality whereas plato would be always looking for the one ideal gender so um you know th that is a strong basis for for all patriarchy from thenceforward, right? I mean, again, I, I never know if I'm reading too much into it, but you can see you could see that in that last slide you had where they had the one apple versus the category of apples. So the one apple in in if Plato were saying it, there would be an ideal human being, mm -hmm. which I have a feeling would end up being man. And um versus in the world of human beings, there's much more um, variability, shall we say? Um, 
I, I will say both are <laughs> sexist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. You know, I don't see anyone as a better. Uh, uh, well, they, better. As hu they as human beings, yes, would have been thinking in terms of men. What I'm saying, though, in the evolution of their thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, one can see the potentiality for more than one particular ideal human being. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> because you're having a world of human beings. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. But unless you were open to thinking of all human beings as human beings, um, which I doubt was happening anywhere at the time, or at least in in Greece, um, you're not going to be thinking the way I just. That's what I'm saying. I'm only half serious because, I mean. I think that the, that a lot of what we're talking about became a, a firm foundation for um, the patriarchy that that's been so dominant in the Western Hemisphere ever since. But I could be wrong. Yeah. Yes, it's all dominated by the. But wasn't yeah. Aristotle who said that the women were imperfect men, and also they, it's not that they they were they are in fault because they thought like that but people i mean after them they choose to pick up those things so yes, i think I, i'm not disagreeing marika what i'm saying though is that it could have if somebody was a little more bold that or maybe somebody was and we just haven't read about them because they were all assassinated but you can see the possibility for more variability in the way Aristotle is developing it. Not that Aristotle himself was interested in including imperfect males, but um, that nevertheless, in the evolution of his thinking and his categorizations, it the foundation for allowing for the variability was there. Okay, gotcha. yeah. So you he paid the road for the future development. Yeah, that's if cool. I recall, uh, Aristotle talks more about this in Nicomachean Ethics, about differences in gender and relationships between that and uh, skill sets and practical virtue and stuff. So it might be might be worth bringing it up next time if we talk about ethics. Well, that'd be great. And now if you can... Uh, yeah. uh, it's, 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 probably it's probably going to be pretty offensive to women. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no it's, it's not, it's not it's much. It's not better. Curious, <laughs> Epicurus was very positive. He said that there were, you know, he invited women to his school. So uh, there, there were some that there were. I, I don't know. He invited women to the school or not. I just don't think so. Because... And slaves too. I mean, it's been, that... a, it's been a it while occurs. since I've read Nicomachean yeah. Ethics, but I think that Aristotle says something along the lines of women are incapable of practical virtue, but are capable of the like contemplative virtue, which he says is better. And if whether or not that's a good thing to say, I think is uh, it's bad. But like it's not as cut and dry as Plato is. Yeah, I, this part I agree with you. You know, because uh, in the in the Plato even said like if you were coward, you know, a coward man, you would become woman. You know, next time. So <laughs> <laughs> that's in Plato's, you know, in Plato's dialogue. So uh, again, again, if you talk, talk about the gender issue, and then there's no way they can defend. You know, they are virtuous. So. <laughs> And Greg, I'm not offended by it. I'm I'm quite used to it. I've been a woman all my life. <laughs> yes, uh, well, I appreciate I mean, the you no, nowadays things are much different. Even though it may not be to your satisfaction, but uh, it's incomparable. Right. But anyway, saying... when I make the slide, usually I try to change it from men to people. But you know, sometimes I forget. You know, so you know, yeah, it's once a while people will mention, but you know. Just I get it. It's not about offense. It's it's just sort of from my perspective, it's more like how could I mean I can understand how and why it's they could have missed the fact that they're incomplete without the rest of humanity. But um yeah, so it's like um he was a brilliant thinker. It just didn't occur to him to actually embrace everything in his environment. He decided yeah, I think, to find certain certain characters out of it. Um, so that was the basis for the, the patriarchal um, habituation, shall we say. Um, but his philosophy does not support 
that patriarchal habitu habituation. Yeah, he was also a slave owner. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if we look at that at that part. I mean, it never occurred to him that it would be. Uh, uh, oh, exactly. Unfair. That's the same thing, uh, right? Right. <laughs> It's, right. It's the yes. same exact thing. It's like slaves, women, all lesser creatures. Um, and yeah, it yeah, was so, facts of life at the time, you know. Exactly. They just grew up on this, yeah. Exactly. And we, we over centuries, it, it's been repeatedly capitulated to. And I can't help but wonder if it's, if that's partly because, well, look, Aristotle, he made so much sense. Look, you know, he developed this system of logic, so clearly he couldn't have missed anything. Um, again, I tend to like retro engineer things, so um, I, I may be completely yeah. off base, but I think it's worth considering. Well, as a matter of fact, he was wrong on many things, and, and <laughs> his influence, uh, uh, you know, he was right in many uh, things, but he was also wrong in many things. And his, uh, his influence basically... I would think uh, created a lot of obstacles uh, for, for uh, science uh, later on because people oh, were yeah. so his his authority was so big that uh, you know it was hard to overcome and uh, uh, so well uh, uh, every uh, uh, everybody has uh, limitations uh, everybody it's, yeah and yeah. I'm not complaining about it I'm just like I say to me it's it's always been fascinating that we could have for so long existed in 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 a in a way of thinking that believed th that could see itself as incomplete unless it included all of the specimens that are human beings do you see what i'm saying so yes yeah. i agree with you i see the the obstacles and it fascinates me that somebody who could think so clearly could miss so much <laughs> Yeah, uh, th thank you for this subject. I think uh, the, about uh, uh, Greg talk about this one. I believe you talk about like a new Newtonian for uh, uh, yeah yeah uh, mechanics as well. So I, that, that's also I probably will talk about next week, you know, or I will make another section to talk. About. That's also very interesting part because uh, uh, because Aristotle's uh, physics he talk about motion in a totally different way, and then you know. Uh, in a way, we can say it prevent us to thinking about Newtonian way. Okay, in, in a way. Okay, but you know, it, it's a, up to your interpretation. But you know, in a way, you can see you know that's the reason. Uh, we have a, we are run, almost running out of time, and then we have a Fred. You know, please thank you for waiting. I see you have the slide up where Aristotle's four causes. Yeah, and uh, I wondered if uh, you plan to address entelechy, which exists somewhere, I think, in between potentiality and actuality. Um, is this something that we'll discuss next time? Entelechy? I think we will uh, discuss next time. I, I, I probably will put, let me see, you know, probably I will put uh, this one and uh, uh, politics next time. And then let's talk about uh, Esker. I make another section for uh, Aristotle. Seems a lot of people are interested in Aristotle. And according to Petty, am I right? You said uh, Aristotle are more interesting than Plato? I'm not more interesting. I just find that, um, like I say, the thinking, I can see the thinking as brilliant, especially if I place it in the time. But that's the part that, that blows my mind is that this man could have been such a clear, brilliant thinker, and yet have missed so much and, and just continued on down a road that allowed him to keep leaving out so much. And yes, it, it, in the long run, the brilliance of his thinking, I think, blinded human beings from seeing other things for longer than it might otherwise have taken. I, I don't know if I'm making sense, truly. Of course, it makes sense. And then I believe your feeling probably will change from time to time because sometimes you see it's great, sometimes you see. But anyway, they, they all great, put this way. They do a lot of work and I cannot imagine a person write so much, so many things, both Plato and Aristotle. Okay, that's so many things, so many things. And the, uh, both are 
difficult to read and both are interesting, even Plato, you know. Uh, at the beginning, I hate Plato's. And uh, when I read a lot of Plato's dialogue and I start to see it's fun, you know, a lot of inf information over there, and especially last week uh, for this opportunity, I start to present, you know, and I start to reorganize what I have read. And I find out it's a lot, you know, I, I, I just have to say they are great. But anyway, thank you everyone. And sorry for uh, today's a lot of interruption on the uh, bummer. And I'm going to go back to set up my account to make it more secure because I, I did uh, make it a little bit loose, you know, this week because some uh, people complain as they've been trying to get in, but he said, you have been removed, so it cannot be. So if, if, if you are being removed, I believe all here, everyone is a good person. <laughs> if you have been removed and then by mistake, just send a message to me, I will bring you in. So, you know, uh, sometimes it's just overwhelmed and then we just have to quickly kick out, you know. Yeah, my people. guess is that some of those people that are complaining are probably the ones that are trying to get back in so they can continue bombing. No, 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 no. Actually, it's a real person. <laughs> this okay. is a real person. Yeah. Yeah, this is a real person. Yeah. Yeah. I know because I know. <laughs> I know. All right. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. How, how do we message you, Jason? Yeah. How do we message you? Uh you can you use the uh the the, the meetup meet up, meet up, meet up, meet up, meet up. Meet up messages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then uh thank you everyone. And the next thank week. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, and then I hope I make it uh, uh, everything clear. And uh, but you know, so I just have to say it's not an easy uh, subject on the uh, uh, citizen, uh, a, the uh, the the square of opposition, you know, all this kind of thing. It's a little bit technical, but you know, I I will try my best. And very exciting. Okay, you very know. very exciting though. And I'm so sorry if I slow you down. I'm really sorry. No, 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 no. Actually, I would prefer have a few discussion and then, you know, because it's unlike the reg, uh, real class, people, we have the people, you know, have the similar background. Everybody has a different background. Everybody has a different kind of interest. So, and that's the way, you know, we can learn from each other. And actually, I constantly talk about this. It's uh, I, so many times I feel I'm the most, the person benefit most because by you guys ask question or comment, bring me to think about a lot of things I have never think about before. So anyway, thank you and I'll see you next week. And thank I will you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. everybody. Ciao. All the best. Problem thank you, Greg. Thank you so much. No. This, so. The problem is this stuff keeps me awake because it energizes me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Blessings all. Have a good evening. All right. See you next time. Okay. okay bye. bye.